Okay, so uh, what we've done so far is uh, looked at BGT amplifiers and basically the stages common emitter, common base, common collector. And uh, we also saw this combination, common emitter, common base, which we were calling it as cascode, cascode amplifier. So that also we saw. And so BGT is, uh, we didn't uh, uh, do this with PNP, but very similar. All that we need to do is, uh, for example, if I were to make a PNP amplifier, right, so this is NPN. So for uh, PNP amplifiers, they would be very similar, except that note that uh, emitter would be at the top, collector here, collector here, and then we will do similar, similar here. We will do similar here, similar here, and uh, emitter we can put here, we'll call this VEE instead of, let's say, VCC, VCC, all right, so we'll call it VEE here, VCC here. There are various ways of constructing, we could put this to ground, this to ground here, and uh, signal you would still apply at the base let's say common emitter configuration vs here but you would take a output here collector again uh, v0 this is our rc and uh, you could put here a capacitor bypass rd you can you can put it to ground you can put it to ground and this would behave in a very similar manner, right? This is a PNP, PNP, common emitter amplifier. Very similar, except that the emitter is, uh, uh, you can call this whichever, R1, R2. So emitter is at the uh, top here, okay? emitter is at the top, current flows from emitter to collector. This is the base emitter voltage, so that's equal to 0.7. And uh, the rest is uh, very similar, very similar. Remember the common uh, small signal model, SS model, model is same, same as NPN. Small signal model of PNP is same as NPN, and all these expressions, AV equal to minus GMRC, Rn equal to R pi, approximately equal to R not equal to RC, all these are valid here also. They're all the same. So small signal analysis uh, pretty much remains the same. Uh, what differs is uh, basically the DC analysis. DC analysis, that's what you need to look at, that between emitter and base, so base is lower than emitter by uh, 0.7s or VEB instead of VBE, VEB is 0.7 and the direction of the currents that you need to see here, the currents goes like this here, the current goes like this here, collector. So the currents are different, the direction of the currents are different, okay. And uh, the other than that is, is, is uh, very similar, uh, PNP, so one could make any of these stages, PNP, CE, we could make PNP, uh, CB and we could make PNP CC. We could make all of them here, except that uh, PNP is not uh, that attractive uh, compared to NPN versus PNP. NPN versus PNP uh, is not very attractive because generally the beta of NPN you will find is greater than beta of PNP. Generally you will find that which means that, uh, remember, for a common emitter amplifier, uh, we had seen that ultimately the response of a common emitter amplifier, we saw this AV Rn by R0 was equal to beta, was equal to beta here, the response of a common emitter amplifier. So beta is very important, and beta PNP generally, as I'm saying, beta PNP is lower than beta NPN. The other thing is, uh, if I look at C pi, C pi, uh, capacitance C pi, you will find C pi 
of PNP is larger than C pi of NPN. Which means, you know, higher capacitance generally translates into a slower transistor. Higher capacitance means lesser upper cutoff frequency and that translates into a slower uh, transistor here. Yeah. So that's the reason why we don't prefer uh, PNP we, because of better NPN here and lower C pi here, lower C pi here, we prefer uh, NPN transistors for implementing our uh, circuits here. So NPN transistors are preferred. All right. This is a place we saw earlier that where you require uh, both PNP and NPN. We said that uh, in a normal common emitter amplifier, uh, we put a load here. I'm not drawing the full circuit, RC. I'm drawing only the small single circuit here. So we put an input here, VI. We had done that uh, in one of the problems, and we take output V0 here. Now, the problem with resistors is that the gain, as you, as you realize, the gain AV is minus GMRC. And then if we write it as minus ICQ RC by VT. So if we look at the uh, magnitude of the gain, magnitude of the gain, we find ICQ RC is equal to the magnitude of the gain, AV0, let's put AV0, times VT. Right? This is an important relationship for this amplifier. ICQRC, AV0VT. What this is telling us is, if ICQRC has to be equal to AV0VT, what it is telling you is that VCC, obviously, ha well, obviously VCC has to be greater than AV0 times VT. Obviously, AV0 times VT. VCC has to be greater than that value. I mean, this is actually very simple. You know that uh, there's a drop here, then you need a drop here. We saw for voltage swing, and there used to be a resistor here for drop here also, right? So uh, there was a drop here, but uh, so what it's saying is VCC has to be greater than AV0VT. So what it is also pointing out is that if you want to make uh, high gain amplifiers, high gain amplifiers, high gain amplifiers, high gain amplifiers require large supply voltage. Large supply voltage. Say you want to build a gain of uh, AV0 of 200. AV0 of 200. So the first term, uh, 200, 100, 2.6, the first term itself becomes 5.2 volt. 200 you require 5.2 volt. Plus, you'll have to put something here for the swing. Plus, there's a drop here. You know, there's an emitter resistance and there's a drop here. So what you're finding is that the supply voltage is getting higher. On the other hand, if, if somebody were to just give you a, say, supply voltage is only 3 volt. If supply voltage is only 3 volt, what this is implying is that then the gain is limited. Right? So this circuit has this issue. That to get a high gain, we require a high supply voltage. And we saw earlier a solution to this particular problem is where we take this resistor out. We take this resistor out and we had done one problem. We said if you take this out here, take this resistor out, take this out here, and if we replace it by a current source, we replace it by current source, I naught. I, whatever, I, uh, I, I see whatever, current here. Then, when you replace it by this, and if it's an ideal current source, what you end up getting, then you don't get this. Then you get AV equal to minus GM. The current source is like an open circuit. And now you cannot neglect the output resistance of the transistor, so you get GM R0. And GMR0, if we put minus ICQ by VT, multiplied by R0 is VA by VT, and note that uh, VA by ICQ, 
VA by ICQ and ICQ, ICQ can cancels and you get minus VA by VT, AV0. And you find that this gain is independent of supply voltage. There is no supply voltage here. independent of supply voltage. Not only that, if I put VA equal to 100, 100 by 26 millivolt, you can see it's a very high gain. It's a very high gain. So if you want to build very high gain uh, at low supply voltages, very high gain at low supply voltages, what it's saying is don't use RC, use the current source. Don't use RC, use the current source here. All right? So current source, so what, it, what is it giving us? High gain, high gain uh, with low supply voltage. In fact, it's independent of supply voltage. High gain with low supply voltage. So the issue then becomes is, okay, so this is a nice amplifier if I use a current source, how do I realize a current source? How do I make a current source? And in that respect we saw earlier, remember when we look at a transistor, when, when I look at a transistor and we said IC, if you look at IC versus VCE, the characteristics looks like this for a bipolar transistor. And if you examine this particular region here, this region here, in this region the current is almost independent of voltage here. And therefore, the transistor acts like a current source. Transistor acts like a current source in this region. So the idea is, okay, so I require a current source and a transistor acts like a current source if you bias it in the active region. Current source is nothing but constant, constant current width. So the idea is that we can build this current source using a transistor. And if you recall that in one of the problems, what we did was we said, okay, let's take this out. Let's take this out, this current source here, and let's put a, a transistor here. And the transistor that we need to put because of the directions of the current and all that that you see here is because of a P and P. We end up putting a P and P here. And we have to put some bias here to maintain it in active mode. So we put a PNP. This, the purpose of this is to serve as a current source. Now if you're wondering why didn't we put NPN, if I had put an NPN, if I had put an NPN, let's say here NPN, the NPN would have looked like this. NPN would have looked like this, right? We would have put something like this here. And note that this is the output node here. If I put an NPN, this, this, this would have been the output node, this would have been connected to VCC. And we have seen that the, and when you build the circuit, when you look into the emitter, when you look into the emitter, you see a resistance which is R pi by beta. So if I had put an NPN transistor here, the resistance, effective load resistance would have been R pi by beta, very low and I wouldn't have gotten any gain. On the other hand, if I put a PNP, then you are looking into the collector and we had seen that when, when you take a transistor and look into the collector, you see a very large resistance here, right? So same, if I take a transistor uh, here and I look into its collector, collector resistances are not very high. But I can't put a collector here, so that's why I have to use a PNP here. So you see that when, when we want to build high gain amplifiers, uh, we, would, we would use the NPN transistor as a drive transistor. And the load, we would like to use a current source as a load. And the load we would realize using a PNP transistor. Right, so you see a role for PNP. Maybe you will not make a, uh, a, a common emitter amplifier using PNP. If you have NPN available, maybe beta of NPN is better, its frequency response is better, so you would normally use an NPN, but you would use PNP as a load. 
So in that context, you require both type of transistors. You require NPN and you require PNP. So whenever you're making high gain amplifiers, uh, you would require these PNP load stages here. So that's why when you go to an op amp, if, you, if you're designing an op amp, you will find that you would require these stages here. You would require both NPN and uh, PNP here. All right, so th those things, uh, you would do that uh, maybe towards the end of the course, you'll see how to put together different stages and build an op amp. So today what we do is, as I said, uh, what we do today is uh, uh, we talk about basically similar things, but with MOSFET, MOS amplifiers, MOSFET amplifiers. So the, actually it's very similar. All that we need to do is this transistor that we have put here, you take it out and you put a MOSFET. And this is the symbol that we will use for a, a NMOS. And the symbol that we'll use, this is PNP. The symbol that we'll use for PMOS is here. PMOS is like our N, and this is our PMOS here. Right. So for example, a very, uh, we'll, we'll look into the operation of this, a very simple uh, uh, com instead of calling common emitter, so there is a, uh, you can see the difference here, this is source, this is drain, and this is gate, so this is collector, emitter, base, so common emitter becomes a common source, common emitter amplifier becomes a common source, and the way I would build it is, no, uh, in a very similar manner, one of the common source amplifiers could be built, not here, we'll put some resistance here, put a bypass here, put some resistor here, except that we will not call them RC now, we will call them R drain, R drain here, we will not call it VCC, we'll call it VDD, because it's biasing this here, you could use the same thing here also. You could make an amplifier of this kind, very similar. Yes, and you could take the output here, V0 put a capacitor here. That becomes a common source amplifier. Similarly, if I take my transistor out, plug it into a common base, it will become a common. What will common base become? What would be a common base amplifier here? Common? Common gate. It would become common gate amplifier. So common source is one, common gate is another, and the third one would be? Common drain, which we will also call it as a? Remember common collector was also called what? Emitter follower, so we'll call it? Source follower. You could call it a source follower. Right, so these are the three amplifiers that you can build. common gate, common drain, common source. You could build it with an NMOS, you could build it with a PMOS. So, if you want to analyze a amplifier like this, what do you require? What information do you require if you want to build an amplifier like this? To analyze an amplifier like this. R1, R2 are resistors. What do you need? Remember when you analyze an amplifier, what do you require? A model of transformer. You require bias point and then you do small signal analysis. To do that, what will you require? A. So if I want to analyze this amplifier, what do I need? I need a DC. I need a DC model of this MOSFET. How do I look upon the MOSFET? And I need a small signal, small signal model. So once I have these two, then I'm in a position to analyze all the uh, uh, MOSFET amplifiers also. Same procedures that we have followed is ex very similar procedures you have to follow for the MOSFET also. Okay, so it's, it's, it's it almost like a, becomes like a repetition. Okay, now before I leave this topic, uh, this, uh, uh, and, and talk about this, so, so common emitter, 
Kommen in die Mitte. Kommen bis. Kommen Collector. Right? Common source. Why am I writing it in, uh, you know, wasting my time and making it so colorful? <laughs> huh? Is there a reason for it? Common drain. I, I use three colors. I use red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. Or well, not like like this. R is my red. R G R G B. What is so important about R G B? R G B, red, green, and blue. Hmm. What is so important about red, green, and blue? We tend to call them what? Primary colors, right? We tend to call them the primary colors. Primary colors. And what is the significance? Primary colors significance? That by mixing these colors, right? My, by mix significance is, which is not exactly true though. Uh, by mixing these colors, by mixing red and green and blue, I can get all the colors that I want, right? That's not true. If, you, if, if I give you a pure red, pure green, and pure blue, by mixing it, you can get all the colors. Not true. The eye can see many more colors that cannot be obtained by mixing RGB. That's a, actually a fallacy. But a large part of colors uh, that the eye can perceive can be obtained by mixing RGB, red, green, and blue. That's what happens in your uh, mobile screens. You have a uh, uh, you know a red color filter, a green color filter. If you have an LCD, you have a red color filter, a green color filter, and a blue color filter. So what it does is you have a white light, and it filters in. So you get red from one place, green from another place, and blue from another place. These are mixed together to get all the colors that you want. Okay. Otherwise, in an OLED, you have LEDs which are emitting red, green, and blue. Right. So by mixing all these, you can obtain many colors. Now, why have I drawn this? Common emitter in red, common base in green, and common collector in blue. Your complicated amplifiers, right? Whichever amplifier that you would look at is actually made up of what? Some common emitter, common base, common collector. Some common source, common gate, and common drain. So these are like the primary, right? Primary colors, these are primary stages. Primary amplifier stages. Primary amplifier stages here. Just like you can mix these up to get many, many colors, you can mix these up to get many, many different kinds of amplifiers. Okay, so these are the basic common emitter, common base, common collector. Mix them up. Multi stage amplifier, mixing them. We have already seen that you mix CE and CB, and you got a cascode. You got a cascode amplifier, right? Uh, so like that, there are many different ways that you can mix it up and, and, and get many different stages. So it's, that's why we spend time trying to understand these basic stages. What are the properties? How do they behave? Okay. All right. So let's come back to then MOSFETs here. How do I understand MOSFETs? MOSFETs. All right, so let's try and understand there are three, there are, uh, you could break it up into two parts here, the word MOSFET. You could break it up into MOS and then you can break it up into FET, F-E-T. So there is a MOS part, which is important, but much more important is this, which is field effect transistor. field effect transistor. And in this, the important phrase, of course, is transistor is important, but what is this field effect thing here, right? What is this field effect 
field effect transistor which is making it field effect. The other one is, well, this metal oxide semiconductor. So it's a particular kind of a uh, field effect transistor. For example, there could be a transistor which would be, let's say, J FET. There's a transistor which is uh, the J stands for junction FET. Junction FET. Then there is a transistor, you, you will see, MES FET. These are all FET, MES FET. Metal semiconductor field effect transistor. There's a MES FET here, right? You may hear. Uh, uh, you know, uh, th so so there there are uh, uh, you know one could put several things before this, and and make various uh, kinds of uh, 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 field effect transistors that are there here. So it's important to understand what is this field effect uh, principle that is there, and the principle is very easy. The principle of field effect transistor is very very simple. So this field effect principle. Now remember, you are trying to use a field effect principle for making a transistor. And in a transistor, what are you trying to get? If, uh, you know, when, you, when you're trying to make a tra uh, transistor, what you're trying to get is the following. Transistor is, you know, at the minimum is supposed to be a three terminal device. Let's say some transistor if you're trying to make. What you're trying to do is, and let's say there's a voltage here. Uh, let's put some V in and I in. And let's put some voltage V0 and I0. Right? You're trying to make a, uh, a, a transistor. What property should this three terminal element have so that we can call it a transistor? What are you looking for? Just to remind you so that you are familiar, remember we said Bipolar transistor is, an, is a bipolar junction that structure is a transistor, right? N, P, N is a transistor. Remember its characteristics? Let me just draw these characteristics. This is what the collector current output. Collector current versus, uh, let me show you, IC versus VCE. Note something very interesting about this device. Right, we saw this. I C versus V C. Now we also said this corresponds to a particular value of base current, right? But you are you you can also we can let's say it also corresponds to a certain value value of base emitter voltage. So uh, let's put here let's put this to ground. Uh, sorry, uh, mm, uh, put some emitter voltage here, here, and you're getting collector here, right? This is a transistor, three terminal element, which we are calling it a transistor. Which is the most useful part for amplifiers that we are talking about? This region, right? Hmm? This region. What do you note about this particular region here? How is the transistor, you know, what is so unique about a transistor? Look at this characteristics here, this region. There's something which is very unique about this particular region here. VCE, this is VCE. There's something very unique about this, if you think about it. Let me write it down for you. What is very unique is the following of this region here. Output current. Output current is IC, right? Output current is, how is output current's dependence on uh, output voltage? is insensitive insensitive to output current is insensitive to output voltage output voltage fine you see that is insensitive to output voltage voltage is insensitive to output voltage. Remember, if another one, if I draw, it will come out like this. But, but it is very sensitive to 
to input voltage. Now, don't you find this very strange? Don't you find this very strange? Is insensitive to output voltage, very sensitive to input voltage. I mean, imagine a current flowing between a pair of terminals, right? Between a pair of terminals. And it's not sensitive to voltage applied across that pair of terminals. Right? It's flowing between a pair of terminals and it's not sensitive to voltage applied across that pair of terminals. But it's very sensitive to voltage applied across some other pair of terminals. Right? This is a very strange characteristic. Normally, you would expect that current flowing between a pair of terminals would be very sensitive to voltage applied across that pair of terminals. That's how resistors, capacitors, inductors, they all behave like that. But here is a very different thing. It's very sensitive to something far away and not at all sensitive to something which is local across its own pair of terminals. So that's very strange. Right? Now, how do we define this? What is very sensitive to input voltage? We define this quantity, sensitivity of current. Remember, sensitivity of current to voltage is what? Del I by del V. What will I call this? Conductance, right? We will call this conductance. So sensitivity of output current to input voltage. What will I call it? Remember, output current to input voltage. What should I call it? No? Transconductance. We should call it transconductance. And sensitivity to output voltage, we should call it? Output conductance. Right? They're all conductances, but we call it output conductance and we call this transconductance. So what is the unique characteristics of a transistor? Transconductance is much, much larger than output conductors. Right? So that's the unique characteristics of a uh, transistor here. Transconductance much, much larger than output conductance. This is what you're looking for. If you can find this in any other element, that transconductance is much, much larger than output conductance. Well, you can go ahead and make an amplifier using this, using that particular element. Because remember, this is where we were biasing all our transistor. We were biasing it there and then making a common emitter, common base, common collector, all those things that we were doing here. So what we are looking for is transconductance much, much larger than output conductance. Now, output conductance is straightforward. Take any element, vary the voltage across it, current would obviously vary. That's straightforward. So the first thing that you are looking for is what? I'm looking for that my output current should be controlled by some other voltage. You're looking for this. First of all, you're looking for a transconductance effect. And then you're looking for that transconductance should be much larger than output conductance. Okay? So remember, our first goal is I have to create a device which shows transconductance. Transconductance. So I have to get transconductance. It's a very important uh, parameter, transconductance. Del I0 by del V in. I need to get this quantity, transconductance. So note that how do I get transconductance? Well, uh, bipolar is one way in which you get transconductance. Field effect transistor, you get transconductance like this here. Let me draw it for you. And you can see, yes, that should act like a. Let me take a piece of n-type semiconductor. Or let's take a p-type semiconductor. P-type semiconductor. Okay. Let's take p-type semiconductor. Let's make two contacts to it. Two contacts here. We make contact here, and we make contact here. Two contacts. Let's put this to ground. Let's apply some positive voltage, whatever, some voltage you apply. Say positive voltage. Right? So current would flow, P-type semiconductor. It's a whole uh, this thing, so uh, positive voltage here. So the current would flow from like this here, obviously. The holes will flow like this. There's a current flowing. 
P-type semiconductor is there, there's a current flowing. Right? There's a there's a current here. There's a current I. This current I would, if I call this, old, let's say I0, let's call this V0, obviously del I0 by del V0 is there, output conductance is there, right? As, I, as you change the voltage current, would change. That's a normal thing. Now I, I have to create transconductance. In this device, I have to create a transconductance. Okay, so suppose now I do the following. Just a hypothetical device, I do the following here. Mm. I take a plate here. Take a plate here. And apply a voltage here. Okay? Take a plate and apply a voltage here. Right? Uh, for the moment, let's say there's an air gap. There's an air gap. But place this, work, place this plate fairly close to this one here, top surface here. All right? Now, I apply a positive voltage here. Positive voltage here. Now, think of what will happen. This is a positive voltage here, right? Positive voltage here. And so, this is one plate of the capacitor. And the other plate is this whole semiconductor acts as the other plate here. This acts like the other plate of the capacitor. The block of semiconductor is not a metal. Normal capacitors you make with a metal. But the other plate, semiconductor is also conducting. Doesn't conduct very well, but is conducting. Okay? So this whole block of semiconductor acts as the other plate of the capacitor. So if you apply, and, and the other plate is, for the, for the moment, let's, uh, let's make it simple. Uh, we'll come back to the output conductance and all that uh, a little later on. So, all right, doesn't really matter. Keep this V not here. It doesn't matter. Here. Okay. So this is one plate, and this this block is the other plate. So now, remember when you apply, you would tend to create charges. Positive means you you would like to create here positive here, and then this would require a counterbalancing negative charge here. Right? A parallel plate capacitor would require that positive charge on the upper plate and negative charge on the bottom plate okay now i want you to, i want to remind you we are saying this is p type i want to remind you of what is a p type semiconductor p type semiconductor is it has what does it have acceptor ions minus all these acceptor ions are there p type everywhere acceptor ions are there and along with the acceptor ions you have these holes here these positively charged holes, right? So when you applied a voltage to the top plate, what did you do? The ions are fixed. They're not going to move. So when you applied a positive voltage here, what did you actually do? You took away the holes from here, from the top. You took away the holes from here, and these holes go positively charged and they come here. They go from here and they come here. Right? And what do you end up leaving? You end up leaving this ne negative acceptor ions. You end up leaving negative acceptor ions. The holes have gone from here and, and they are sitting on the top plate here. Right? You remove the holes from the, your p-type semiconductor. Remove the holes from there. Because you require negative charge there. So you remove the charge, you remove the holes and you put it here. It's positively charged here. In effect, what have you done? If you remove holes from this block of P-type semiconductor, have you changed this conductivity? You have changed this conductivity, right? You have reduced the conductivity. So do I have, if, if there was a current flowing, and we call this the gate voltage, do I have del I0 by del Vg? Is it now greater than 0? I have current flowing between these two pair of terminals being controlled by the gate voltage. Do you see that I have I've created a transconductance? 
I've created trans conductors. The current is controlled by, the current is flowing between these two terminals. This one and here. The current is controlling between these two. Right? And, and you have uh, uh, controlling it by the gate voltage here. So you have created a trans conductance. So this device, some hypothetical device that we have created, we have trans conductance and we have both output conductance. Both of them are there. Now, of course, let me make this. So the basic, when we say field effect, you know, when we say field effect, field effect, what we mean is the following. We are using this electrostatic field here, this field here that you are seeing here, to control the conductivity. Using electrostatic field applied through a gate and controlling the conductivity of the semiconductor. That is the field effect principle. Modulating the conductivity of, so basically modulating or modulating or varying, modulating the conductivity, conductivity of a semiconductor, semiconductor through, through this electrostatic field. Through this electrostatic field applied at the gate, at the gate terminal. That's the field effect principle. Using electrostatic field, so it's actually very simple. It's, it's nothing but a parallel plate capacitor. It's a parallel plate capacitor. You apply a voltage, you want positive charge here, you remove negative charge here. If I do the opposite, what will I get? If I, I don't apply positive voltage, if I do negative voltage, so it would require negative uh, charge on the upper plate. And what will it require on the bottom? Positive. Positive, where would it come? These are holes. So you increase the number of holes in the semiconductor. So in one case, you're removing the holes from the semiconductor. In the other case, you're increasing the number of holes. So what will you end up doing? Increasing the conductivity. So you can increase the conductivity. You can decrease the conductivity. You can do all of that by applying it. Uh, so when I say modulating, I don't mean decreasing only. Uh, you can increase it also. You can increase, decrease the conductivity of a sample by applying a field, by applying an electrostatic field. That's the field effect principle. Now, different FETs will do try to apply this field in different manners and all. Okay, so let's let's give some practical shape to this concept here. Practical shape to this concept, and then you will understand uh, uh, this thing. So the idea, of practical shape that we will give, is the following. Uh, so let's let, let me draw one practical shape to this idea. So we take a block of this p-type semiconductor. P-type. P-type semiconductor. Okay. And let's make uh, uh, different ways of doing it. Let's make a within this p-type semiconductor. Let me make n-type semiconductor. Okay. N type. This is N type. And within this N type, this would be simple to understand. I make here a region N plus, a region N plus. Okay? N plus means when I say uh, uh, N plus, what I mean is doping is greater than 10 to the power 19 or so, very high doping, n plus, very high doping, okay, very high doping. Okay. Then what I do is, all right, so all, all that I have done is, note that uh, I would call this as a, let's say, call this as the source terminal, let's call this as the drain terminal, drain terminal, here, okay, source and drain. But now I'm going to add, so this is nothing but a resistor right now. Note that between source and drain is n type as we said here. So I'm going to add the field effect principle to it. I'm going to add a field effect principle to it by putting an oxide here. Oxide. 
this silicon dioxide shaded region oxide and on top of the oxide I'm going to put a metal on top metal here so this is metal and this is oxide so you can see an MOS system M O and this is S right this is O M O S MOS metal on top oxide underneath it and semiconductor underneath it so MOS and what are we making a field effect transistor all right so I'm making a kind of a MOSFET a kind of a MOSFET MOSFET kind of a MOSFET right now what would happen is note that there is n plus and there is n plus and the semiconductor is also n type so if you apply a positive voltage here put this to ground apply a positive voltage here the current would of course flow the electrons uh, the direction of electron flow electrons would flow the, elec mm, the electrons would flow like this right the electrons would flow like this this is n type semiconductor the current of course would flow opposite like this the current would flow from drain to the source right it's an n type semiconductor you have made two contacts to it the n type semiconductor has electrons and the current flows no problem right and so what do I get I get a current here which we will call this as the drain current ID and what will it depend on it will depend on the drain voltage ID will depend on the drain voltage right ID will depend on the drain voltage whatever voltage I apply ID will depend on that but now I have this gate voltage also I have this additional voltage called the gate voltage okay and let me plot this a, 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 a diagram here of ID versus gate voltage okay ID versus gate voltage and I'm going to plot it like this here okay on this side here so when I apply no gate voltage let's say there's no gate voltage applied zero gate voltage applied okay zero gate voltage applied there is a chat this whole thing is you can see between when I use the terminology source and drain this whole region this whole region that you see here I can call it the channel there's a channel in between channel full of electrons right it's an n-type semiconductor full of electrons the current is flowing you know the analogy of a maybe a water with a source and a drain and a channel connecting the source and the drain you know in that sense uh, so there's a channel here a channel full of electrons because it's n-type this source drain n-type full of electrons so there is a current if you apply a voltage there would be a current there would be some current flowing at zero gate voltage now I apply negative gate voltage what will it do negative gate voltage what will it do negative gate voltage will require negative charge here where did the negative charge come from basically from the channel the electrons went away and what did they do they leave behind this positive charge donor atoms so what will happen to the current the current starts decreasing the current starts decreasing if I apply negative gate voltage the current starts decreasing if you apply even higher gate voltage well the current decreases even more if you apply even higher well it decreases even more eventually you could make the current almost zero what did you do you remove the entire electrons from the channel completely depleted the channel of electrons you removed all the electrons from the channel and there's no channel anymore the current has dropped to zero so you would see that ID is flowing like this and maybe this point 
it makes sense that we, we will call this point as pinch off. You have pinched the channel off. Pinched it off. No channel there. Pinch off point. Right. So this is how this particular and obviously ID varying with gate voltage. So there is del ID by del VG. There is transconductance. There is transconductance. The device exhibits transconductance. ID is a function of VG. It exhibits transconductance. And under, I will not go into the details, under certain conditions if you bias it, you can make transconductance much larger than output conductance. It starts behaving like a transistor. Okay. Now this transistor, we call such a transistor as depletion mode transistor. Depletion mode transistor transistor. Why? Because there, at zero gate voltage there is already a current flowing. There is already a channel at zero voltage. And typically you apply a negative gate voltage in this case to remove the channel. You are depleting the channel. So a channel exists when you don't apply any voltage to the gate, zero gate voltage and you apply it a negative gate voltage to deplete the channel. So we call this transistor as a depletion mode transistor. It's a depletion mode transistor. There would be a pinch off point and uh, uh, you know where, where the, the device uh, uh, you know, ceases to conduct current when you apply higher energy. The transistor that we are interested in is not the depletion mode, is, 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 is a bit different than that. It's not the depletion mode. We are going to construct another transistor which we call as enhancement mode. Enhancement mode transistor. So that transistor was easy to understand. Enhancement mode transistor. Right. In this transistor, as its name indicates, what happens is when you don't apply any gate voltage, there is no channel. Right? So in this case, what would happen is, typically, let's say we are talking about NMOS. So typically what will happen is, if you apply VG equal to 0, there is no channel. There is no channel. There is no channel, very little current. Very little current. You have to apply Vg greater than 0 to create a channel. Vg greater than 0 to create a channel. To create a channel. You have to create a channel. That's why it's called the enhancement mode. At, at zero bias, there is no very little conductivity in the sample. It's not carrying much current. Apply a positive voltage to create a channel. Okay? So we call it enhancement board. Typically, you know that what we have to do is, we have to apply a voltage greater than Vt. This Vt is not the thermal voltage, but it's called the threshold voltage. Threshold voltage. You have to apply a voltage greater than Vt to create a strong channel okay to create a strong channel the word is strong channel for vg less than vt channel is there but is very is weak channel weak means it cannot carry too much current for vg if you go above vt then the channel is is a strong channel strong in the sense of it has more electrons and it can carry more current here all right so let me show you now how this enhancement mode transistor is made and, uh, but before that, to understand enhancement mode transistor, you have to remember one thing about the semiconductor. If I have a semiconductor like this, P-type, let's say, right? You know that there are, if the doping is Na, if the doping is Na, you know that normally P is equal to Na and N equal to Ni square over Na right 
and you know that p into n is equal to a nice square p into n is a nice square right you know this relationship p is n a n equal to a nice square over n a and p into n is a nice square all right now focus on this particular principle p into n equal to n i square all right p into n is n i square now think about the following without going into the details uh, suppose i put a plate on top same plate remember the plate on top and apply a gate voltage remember and let's put the p type uh, 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 let's make a contact to the p type there's a metal contact here let's put this contact here let's put this to ground right the plate doesn't have to hang in the air we now know that what you can do is what can you do in between doesn't have to hang in the air well you can put a oxide here right put an oxide silicon dioxide so there's a metal, there's an oxide, and there is a semiconductor, right? MOS, M, O, N, S, right? There. Now, keep this in mind. Your, uh, uh, your uh, uh, semiconductor, how does it look like? So let's not forget, it's Na. So your semiconductor looks like, let me draw like this. It's full of acceptor ions. So, acceptor ions, all these acceptor ions are there, and it has along with it uh, holes, holes, all these holes are there, all these holes are here. Yeah, along with the acceptor ions, all these holes are there. Holes, of course, are mobile. Okay? Fine? Okay. You apply a voltage Vg greater than zero. What will it do? Think about the field effect principle. What will it do? Vg equal to zero, everything is fine. Now you apply Vg greater than zero. What will it do? What will that? It will create an electrostatic field like this, right? What will this field tend to do? That field will try to push away the positive charge. Try to push the positive charge away from the surface, correct? Which uh, uh, It may try to pull the negative charge to the surface, but negative charges cannot move right now, right? But what are the charges here? So you're right, there is a holes, there's a hole here, but there are few electrons also. There are some electrons also, right? There are some electrons also. So are you seeing that when by applying Vg greater than zero, by applying Vg greater than zero, I can make Ps, Ps is what? Hole density at the surface. I can make Ps less than Na. This is an important point, Ps less than Na. Normally in a, in a semiconductor, what was P? P equal to Na as many acceptor impurities you added that many holes were there but now I'm applying a gate voltage and gate voltage is doing what pushing the holes away from the surface so are you seeing that I can make PS less than NA I'm pushing it away the holes were there equal to NA but by applying an electrostatic field I'm pushing the holes away PS becomes less than NA if PS becomes less than NA then are you seeing the following Yes, so Ps decreases, but Ns into Ps is always equal to Ni square constant. So something very interesting is happening, if you note, constant. Yes, you are decreasing Ps, but what are you doing to Ns? You are decreasing it by applying a field. But what are you doing to Ns? You are increasing it. You are decreasing the hole density and you are increasing the electron density. 
If you keep on applying higher and higher gate voltage, what will happen? The holes will become less and less and less and the number of electrons will become more and more and more. So are you seeing that maybe at if I apply sufficiently large voltage, what I end up creating at the surface? At the surface, what I end up creating? A sheet of electrons. I end up creating a sheet of electrons. It was a p-type semiconductor, but I end up getting a sheet of electrons at the surface. But I have to apply a certain level of voltage to create that sheet of electrons at the surface. So are you seeing that it was a p-type semiconductor, but at the surface, by applying a sufficiently large voltage here, I can make this a n-type semiconductor here. I can, the surface can be made like n-type. N-type in the sense, number of electrons is very high at the surface. So I create a sheet of electrons at the surface by applying a sufficiently large gate voltage. So these are all part of a modulation of conductivity through application of electric field. Okay, so this is important that by applying a gate voltage, I can create a sheet of electrons at the surface here. Okay, this is the basis of our MOSFET here. So in a way, what I have done is note that it was a p-type layer and I converted into n-type. We created what we call as an inversion layer. n-type inversion layer. Why do we call it inver inversion layer? Normally the semiconductor is p-type, but by applying a gate voltage, we pushed the holes away, we pushed all the holes away, and we accumulated these electrons at the surface. The surface has become now n-type. So the bulk is p-type, the bulk is p-type, all this is p-type. The bulk is p-type bulk is p-type, but the surface we have converted into n-type. So that's why we call this an inversion layer. We have inverted the surface. We have inverted the surface. From p-type to n-type we have made it. n-type means lot of electrons as compared to holes. So we have created an inversion layer at the surface. All by application of the gate voltage. By applying a positive gate voltage, I have created an inversion layer in the surface. Now, if you apply a negative voltage here, if you are applying negative voltage here, you will end up creating more and more holes there at the surface. So you will create a, in that case, we will not call it inversion layer, we will call it accumulation layer. Accumulation layer. You are accumulating more and more holes if you apply a negative gate voltage. You accumulate more holes there. Positive gate voltage, look at the direction of the field. Positive gate voltage pushes the holes away. Negative gate voltage will attract more holes to the surface. And so you accumulate, you can create an accumulation layer here. Right, so this is very interesting. By putting a gate voltage, you can do all of these things into your semiconductor. Inversion layer, accumulation layer, all of that that you can do here. So this is, now with this background, let me now draw the MOSFET here. So my MOSFET looks like this. So this is n-type MOSFET I'm drawing. So this p-type. In this p-type, I'm going to create a layer here, n plus. I'm going to create a layer here, n plus. And I'm going to create a silicon dioxide right here, starting from here to here. Actually, there's a uh, let me be a little bit more accurate. You cannot just simply align it. So it's a little bit like this. Here, here, here. So this is my silicon dioxide. And on top of silicon dioxide, for the time being, I'll put a metal here. Metal here. Metal. This is SiO2. And this P-type. And we call this our gate voltage here. We call this the source voltage here and we call this the drain voltage here. And note that there is a body p-type, so we will call this the body. We will we'll call this the body terminal here. So in this way, 
this turns out to be a four terminal device. Source drain, gate, but then body also has a terminal. So what we are drawing is an NMOS. Now if you look at this, if you look at this particular structure, when you apply zero gate voltage, when you apply zero gate voltage, zero volt, this, this is P type, this whole thing is P type, this whole thing is P type. And between N and P, what do you see? Do you see a diode like this? PN junction, junction diode, right? And as you go here, what do you see again? PN junction diode, right? PN junction diode. Now, normal operation of this MOSFET, we do the following. Normal operation, put it to ground. let's say put it to ground and so apply some positive voltage let's say plus 3 volt what do you think about these diodes here d1 and d2 are they forward bias at all look at this start from 0 and go here to plus 3 look at this diode if this is 0 if you think the body if this is 0 the whole of body is like ground right what happens to this diode Zero here, zero here. It's not bias at all. What happens to the other diode? What happened to this diode? Zero here and positive here. Reverse biased. Right? No current would flow. There's no current flowing in the device. Or if you would like, maybe some leakage currents are flowing in the device. Diode leakage currents and all that. Okay? This is at Vg equal to zero some leakage current will flow. Hmm? So Vg equal to 0, very little conduction, very little current, uh, basically leakage currents, right? Very little current here. Now you apply a positive gate voltage so or let me remove this here so all this will stay ground okay this stays as plus three now I'm going to remove the diode so uh, our interest is not so much in the diode now just to show you that uh, v, uh, VG equal to zero very little current so the device is basically in off state device is in cut off cut off state device is in cut off state okay that's, that's the normal state of the device because we are talking about NMOS enhancement mode transistor. Device is in cutoff state. Okay. Now apply a gate voltage which is let's say 0.5 higher gate voltage. Now this 0.5 volt would require positive charge here in the metal. And what will it end up doing? it will end up pushing the holes away right pushing the holes away so you end up creating a region here let's say the holes have been pushed away from all this region here the holes have been pushed away and you end up creating a region where there are only acceptor ions holes have been pushed away right these pushed away here because the positive charge on the gate has to be balanced by negative charge here. Holes have been pushed away. There's positive charge here. So this region, we call it the depletion region. Just like in a PN junction also, there's a depletion region. Depletion region, we've depleted holes. But we also saw that you've depleted holes, but N into P is an I square. So you've reduced the number of holes. Holes have gone reduced, but you've increased the number of electrons. So you do create some electrons here. You do create some electrons. Few, initially they are few, very few, but you do create some electrons that are there. 
right? So there is some electrons. You've created some electrons. Now note that there is a n plus if you start from here and n plus you start from here, you have created some electrons there. You have created a kind of a channel. You have created a channel. Some electrons are there at the surface. You have created a channel, but a very weak channel. You have created a channel, but a very weak very weak channel here. Very few electrons are there initially because you have not applied enough voltage here. You have created a channel. Now you apply a higher voltage here. Right? Let's say we apply threshold voltage we said. Threshold voltage is 1 volt. So we apply 1 volt here. When we apply 1 volt, now the channel is reasonable. You know, it's like more number of electrons are there. Why? Because this one volt, one volt, it pushed away more of the holes away and, and therefore caused more of the electrons to balance. N into P is an I square. So you reduce the number of holes by pushing it more and more, reducing it. So number of electrons increases. So at one volt, you have a reasonable channel. It's not very strong, but you have a reasonable channel at Vt equal to one volt. Now when you go to two volt, and but note that when you go to one volt, you've already sort of inverted the surface. You've created an inversion layer. Inversion layer. You've created an inversion layer at, uh, you know, one, one volt. A reasonable inversion layer. Electrons are there. Because a normal p-type semiconductor would have more holes. Now you have more electrons at the surface. You've created an inversion layer here. But at one volt also, the channel is not very strong. So you go to 2 volt, now the channel becomes really strong here, very, very strong channel here, right? Very, very strong channel here. Right, 2 volt and then you can go to 3 volt and all that and make the channel stronger and stronger, okay? Make the channel stronger and stronger. Why is this going here? So, if I were to draw, now if you think about it, you know, characteristics like this, let me draw here, say, ID, this is drain, drain here, ID versus VG. So, what do you think will happen at VG equal to 0? Very little current, there's hardly any channel, very little current. You apply 0.1 volt, what will 0.1 volt do? It will create some channel very weak. So what happens is, it would it appears as if there is some channel, but it appears as if there is very little current here, very, very little current here, you will see. I am drawing on a linear scale, I will show you in a minute. So very little current here, and then you reach a voltage of around Vt, and then current begins to increase here. Current begins to increase here. Vt is where you start creating a, a reasonable inversion layer, a threshold. So Id starts going like that here. You need a certain amount of threshold voltage to create a reasonable channel and cause reasonable current to flow. Okay? So our characteristics, but note that this, this this graph can be very misleading also. It, somebody may draw a graph like this, ID versus VG, and say as if there's no conduction here. That's not true. If I take the same plot and I draw LN ID, LN ID versus VG, what you would see is that there is a conduction. As I said, you start creating a channel here. So there is current here. Current goes like this here. It's increasing. And at around threshold voltage, so what happens is current is almost, you know, linear on a log scale, which means current is increasing exponentially. There's a very weak channel here, and as you apply more and more gate voltage, it becomes stronger, 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 you know, current is increasing exponentially. And then uh, uh, here is where current then begins to uh, sort of, once the channel becomes very strong, the current does not increase as rapidly as uh, as you see here. So note that Vt this here and this Vt here. This is exponential. It increases as some 
uh, VGS by eta some VT and all that is increases exponentially here. All right, so you are distinguishing two regions in a MOSFET. One is what we call as subthreshold region. Right, this is subthreshold region here, subthreshold, and this is above threshold, above threshold and subthreshold. above threshold and sub-threshold. So threshold is like a boundary. Above threshold, you have a strong channel. Below threshold, you have a weak channel. But you have a channel. You have some current conduction which is there. Okay. Now above threshold is our interest. Above threshold, we can show that let me give you a model above threshold. So let's now, uh, in the remaining time, let me uh, sort of summarize it and tell you how the how the MOSFET uh, characteristics look like. So that's the basic operation here. MOSFET here. Uh, there is a body terminal, right? There's a body terminal here. So this is my drain. This is my source, and this is my gate and body terminal. We draw it like this here. So body terminal. If you look at MOSFET is. N plus, we should put it here, 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 this P type. So, body, sort of an arrow, you can see a PN junction here. PN junction, which is pointing like this, right? P to N, or you know, when there's a channel formed, there's a PN junction here. So, arrow is pointing like this here. Okay, so that's where the arrow is. Arrow from, from the body to the source, if you look at it, it's a PN junction going like this or body to the channel when you create channel is n type this is p type so you have an arrow it's like a pn junction okay it's with an arrow like this here all right so many times we don't draw a four terminal we draw it like this here so that also indicates a uh, gate drain and source indicating the direction of the currency here drain current here source current here and all that okay so this is our uh, uh, mosfet operation basic MOSFET operation. So basic MOSFET operation, you are all seeing uh, that the, the ID versus VG, one, one of the thing was there is very low current, very low current and then current begins to start increasing at around VT, right? So keep that in mind, ID versus VG, you require a certain threshold voltage for significant current to flow. But at the same time, do not make the mistake that there is no current here. We've already drawn the current is exponential, okay? Exponentially falling, all right? So keep that in mind. In this region, the current is LNID, current is exponentially falling here. This is this part here, okay? So do not make that particular mistake that current is zero. So that's one part. We understand why the current has become a function of gate voltage, right? Why is there a threshold voltage? Threshold voltage marks when you create a strong enough channel. So that's ID versus VG, correct? The next thing to understand is how does ID depend on VD? ID versus VG looks like this, okay. How does ID depend on? VD is what we'll see in the uh, on Monday's lecture. We'll hold Monday's lecture here, sir, and we'll see ID versus VD, how it varies. And uh, then we'll look at the MOSFET model, DC model and small season model. And as I said, once you have that, then all the MOSFET amplifiers you, you can do. Common gate, common source, common drain, all of that you'll do. Okay? Mm -hmm.